Hi there. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with epilepsy that's been caused by a stroke? Well, then this might be the video that's for you because today we're discussing, guess what? Strokes that may have caused epilepsy. Yay! <laughs> uh, all right, so yeah, as you can tell, we're gonna talk about how a stroke may cause epilepsy in some cases and uh, what exactly is a stroke? I mean, my myself, uh, I've heard of a stroke, have a general idea of what it is, but uh, I kind of wanted to dive in what exactly happens in your brain when that uh, goes on and uh, have some cool animation of what that is and a couple of uh, neurologists um, talking about their studies and I promise this will be kind of a quick video, but just, you know, diving into it a little bit. Um, I myself have epilepsy, but uh, did not have it caused by a stroke that I know of. I have memory problems that I'm pretty sure did not have a stroke. So um, first off, let's see what exactly a stroke is. Stroke occurs when the flow of blood to part of the brain is cut off. What causes a stroke? To function properly, brain cells need a constant supply of oxygen and nutrients, which they get from blood. When the blood supply to part of the brain is suddenly stopped, brain cells become damaged or die. This can lead to permanent brain damage or even death. A stroke may go unnoticed if only a small blood vessel is affected. But if a large blood vessel is blocked, it may lead to long-term disability or death. There are two types of stroke. Ischemic stroke is the most common type, most often caused by a blood clot or a piece of fatty material blocking an artery, restricting its blood flow. Hemorrhagic stroke is when the walls of a blood vessel in the brain become weak and burst, causing bleeding and brain damage. Transient ischemic attack, TIA or mini stroke, is similar to a stroke, but the brain's blood supply is temporarily blocked and the effects of the blockage get better within 24 hours. The clot either breaks up quickly or the affected area receives blood from nearby blood vessels. TIAs do not cause permanent brain damage, but are important because they are often a warning sign for a stroke. Okay, so apparently there are three kinds of strokes, two main large ones and then one mini stroke. All right, and now we're gonna hear from a neurologist that did a study that found um, in a large part of people that developed epilepsy after a stroke, a certain part of the brain was affected. And I found that interesting. And after that, we're gonna see a guy uh, that had a seizure after a stroke, not necessarily developed epilepsy, but he had a seizure that correlates to what she was saying about what part of the brain was affected. And he shows in detail through a CAT scan of how that part of the brain was affected. So check it out. My name is Beate Diehl. I am a clinical neurophysiologist and neurologist. I work at University College London in London, England at Queen Square. And uh, what motivated us for the current study is that it is very common that patients who have survived a stroke start suffering from epilepsy. I think there is not enough knowledge uh, in the broader community of more general neurologists as well as general practitioners about the problem of post-stroke epilepsy. And we wished to identify how common it is in our cohort. We were investigating whether there's a particular area in the brain that uh, might increase the risk to develop post-stroke epilepsy. We did found one area in the left hemisphere, in our left hemispheric um, stroke survivors. Um, this area was affected in about two-thirds of all our post-stroke epilepsy patients and only uh, in, a, in a much smaller number of the stroke survivors that did not um, end up having epilepsy. This is a 60-year-old ma man who experienced a sudden onset of aphasia while shoveling his driveway. This was followed by a witnessed tonic-clonic seizure. So let me show you his CT scan. So you can see this is the right hemisphere of the brain, this is the left hemisphere. You can see the effacement of sulci. So the sulcus here are quite well demonstrated. You do not see the sulci on this hemisphere. 
and you can see this, you can appreciate the edema, compare the right side with the left side and you can appreciate the swelling on the left side. And as we go to the inferior slices, you can see this nice stroke in the distribution of the left middle cerebral artery. In fact, it's a pretty big stroke. So you can see the extension of the stroke with edema and you can see the involvement of the basal ganglia which suggests that this uh, is a proximal middle cerebral artery stroke. All right, so that's what I found doing quick research on the internet. Take what you will from it. I'm sure there's some instances where that is not the case, differential, whatever, you know. This is just a small sampling of what I found. Um, but also, we need to talk about what you can do to prevent a stroke. Uh, here are some of the steps. And that is all I have for today, guys. Let's try our best to stay stroke and seizure free. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.